Hello everyone and welcome back. We're talking about histograms and this is part three of a three-part series. In part one we gave a basic introduction to histograms and part two we talked about how to use histograms in conjunction with your exposure meter to come up with the best possible exposure and in part three we're going to cover why we expose to the right hand side of a histogram. All of this assumes that you're shooting in the raw format instead of like JPEG or TIFF. When you shoot in a JPEG or a TIFF format your camera is altering the linear response of the sensor data and so exposing to the right is not a comparable thing for taking either TIFFs or JPEGs. So let's get started with our discussion about exposing to the right. show you four images, two of which I have purposefully exposed improperly and two that are exposed properly. The first one is one that is exposed to the left and you can see that the image itself is very dark and the histogram has the peak over towards the black side of the histogram over towards the dark side of the histogram. The second image is overexposed and you can see the rock under the marmot is very much overexposed and blown out and you can also see that the histogram is pegged on the right hand side. Now both of these are improper exposures and it's not how we want to expose our scene. Now this third image is a proper exposure. It is in accordance with what the exposure meter says to expose it as and you can see that the rock has good texture and color as does the background and the marmot and then when you look at the histogram you can see that it's pretty much centered like a bell curve between the dark black on the left and the, the whites on the far right. Now there's a concept called exposing to the right and this is where we move our histogram slightly to the right hand side and we try not to blow out any of the whites but we try to expose as much as we can towards the right and that's what this fourth exposure is. You can see that the histogram just about touches the right hand side. So why do we want to expose to the right? Why don't we just want to take like the proper exposure like we saw in that third image? Well this has to do with the portion of the talk that kind of dives a little bit into physics and semiconductor technology and if you look on the internet you'll run into quite a few authorities who say that exposing to the right is unnecessary and I don't want to cause a big problem here but in my opinion they're wrong and it may just be that they're wrong because they don't totally understand the concept. So let's uh, jump into this. We'll be looking at one particular graph in detail, but we'll try to break it down into its component parts and, and, and try to simplify it as much as possible. Back in the old days we used film in order to record our images and now we use a digital sensor in our camera. <laughs> 
and digital sensors are basically linear in their response. And what this means is that light rays coming in and hitting the sensor, uh, the more light rays that you have, in other words, the brighter the light, the stronger the response is. Now, it can get pretty complicated here. You know, we're dealing with, you know, photons and electrons and so on like that. But the basic concept is the more light that you have, the stronger the response is, and the less light that you have, the less strong the response is. And the relationship is basically a linear response. So here we see a graph that is drawn on our screen and it is a histogram and you can see that there is a diagonal line going from the top of the white side to the bottom of the black side and this kind of separates the histogram into two triangles, a triangle on the bottom and a triangle on the top. And this is the linear response of the digital sensor. It is much stronger towards the white end and much weaker towards the black end. So if we accept that a camera sensor has a linear response in the sense that the more light that you have, the greater the response of the sensor is, we have this 45 degree line which goes from the white side of the histogram over to the black side of the histogram. So on the black side where we have no light, we have no response by the sensor. On the white side where we have a lot of light, we have a lot of response by the sensor. And if we divide this histogram up into four equal parts, and then we compute the area underneath this diagonal line, we can see that the black quarter of this histogram only contains 6.25% of the total response of the sensor, whereas the far right quarter contains 43.75% of the total response of the sensor. So what we're dealing with here is what the sensor is able to record, not the histogram in the background. It's just that the right hand side of this graph represents 75 percent of the response of the sensor, whereas the left hand half of this graph represents only 25 percent of the possible amount of data that this sensor can actually accumulate. So the far right hand quarter of this histogram represents over 40% of all of the data that this sensor is able to accumulate, whereas the far left hand side, the sensor is only able to accumulate a maximum of 6.25% of its total response. So what this translates to is there's much more data collected by your sensor on the right hand portion of your histogram than is collected in the central or the left hand portion of the histogram. So if we expose to the right, we're actually collecting far more information than we are if we expose in the middle or we expose on the left hand side. Okay, now we return to this marmot image that we saw earlier and we have this bell shaped curve histogram that is shown alongside the marmot. And you can see to the right of the bell shaped curve there's a lot of data m m missing because we did not expose to the right. And by not exposing to the right, we've lost maybe 30% of the theoretical data we could have collected by not having exposed to that portion.
Now, of course, if we're not going to do anything with this image, if all we're going to do is post it on social media or something like that, then we probably don't need all of that data. But if we're ever going to process our image in Photoshop or enlarge it to a great big image, the more data that we have, the the better the quality of the image. So that is a good reason to expose to the right, especially if you're doing like landscape photography, which we tend to work on extensively in Photoshop. The more data that you're able to collect, the more data you have to work with. And I hope this has been somewhat clear. If it hasn't, please go back and watch the the video again and also ask any questions that you wish down in the comment section. If this has been at all useful to you please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for a lot more content. I thank you for joining me today and I will see you again on our next video.